Yeah, yeah. My favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. And it is Judd's Hockey Show. Welcome in. It's Judd Zolgad, of course. AJ Fredrickson, who joins me for a ton of these shows. For those of you asking, Declan still joins on Wednesdays with Jesse Pierce. But age has become um, a very important top-line wing on this fine program, which I'm sure someday will win some type of award. And before you all get upset out there and think that my co-host is wearing a Detroit Lions cap, that is not a Detroit Lions cap. Uh Uh-uh, look at that. That's a cubby bear. That's an awesome cap. I love that cap. Yeah, I I I think we had this conversation earlier, and I really hate buying into the MLB. We're gonna pump out as many different types of hats yeah. and jerseys as much as possible. For as soon as I saw the Walking Bear logo, I knew they had money from me. I knew they had money no, from me. There's nothing wrong with that. I love it. I love that's it. That's a nice um, one too. Like like these these uh, jerseys. The controversy. Like those jerseys <laughs> suck. They're terrible. But I love that yeah. hat. That's a great hat. Yeah, that's a good purchase. Always. It's good. It's good. It's not bad. Um, it's it's not see through, which is the best the best part about it. But uh, you know, it's a conversation get, for get your probably together. a different show. Yes, it is, and I'm not even sure if it's a conversation for that show because um, <laughs> it's sort of X rated, if you will. All right, the Wild is coming off a a impressive week. So at the start of the week, a, a week ago Monday, Vancouver, which I believe at that time was the best team in the league at home. Yeah followed by the Jets on Tuesday, a couple days off, then a Thursday, or I'm sorry, then a Friday, Saturday, Edmonton and Seattle. So that was three really good teams. Seattle is is much like the Wild. It's a fringe. It might be a playoff team that Kraken might not be. But anyway, the Wild somehow miraculously comes back for a 10-7 win against the Canucks in a crazy game, in a game that the Canucks absolutely blew. I mean, the Wild gets credit. I, I'm not trying to take away credit. But my God, the Wild was dead in the water in that game. Gustafson was terrible. And in the third period, the Canucks fell apart. And to Minnesota's credit, they took advantage. They lose 6-3 to the Jets. The Jets clearly looked like a better team. Yeah. Um, They then go to Edmonton on Friday. And somewhat surprisingly, I thought, won 4-2, 3-2, empty net goal by Zuccarello. And then last night, give up a goal on the first shift of the game to the Kraken. And it's like, oh boy, this is going to be a tough back-to-back. Here we go. And they come back and absolutely uh, blow the drawers off the Kraken. It was 5-2. It felt like 10-2. Like, it didn't feel like 5-2. So, Age, let's just put this in context. Uh, Nashville won last night. St. Louis, I watched them against Detroit, got absolutely hammered at Detroit. Great story, (laughs) Detroit. But... Anyway, the Wild is now tied with the Blues in points. They are now um, they are now behind Nashville for the second wild card spot, mm-hmm. and then it's it's chaos around them because Calgary, which wants to dump, Calgary's a point behind them. Seattle's still in the mix. It feels like the Coyotes are dead and buried. They're gone. Yeah, uh, they're gone. But age absolutely a crazy crazy race for that second wild card spot. Yeah, and uh, honestly, I would say given how the Kings have kind of been up and down, I know they have a couple games in hand. Frankly, I'd rather be on the other side of things, though. Um, You know what games are. So, like, if you, you know, the the weight of, like, oh, we we have to win these in order to lock up, you know, that first wild card spot, whatever, sometimes can be a lot for teams in that Kings team. They still have the veteran presence of Dowdy, Kopitar, sure, but, you know, they're, they're building with Byfield, and we know Kevin Fiala, uh, doesn't have a lot of success in the playoffs. So um, they're at 68 points. I wouldn't say that they're a lock necessarily for that one one spot either. Um, Nashville, St. Louis, I mean, it's just chaos right there down through Seattle, who by no means are out of the mix. Right. Um, it, it, credit to the NHL because they want that chaos. You know, right. their, their point structure. I was going to say, they just give out points. They give out points, and this is where the PWHL led the way. Like they have that three, two, one, zero That's point what system. Yeah. That's what the NHL, I think, has to go to at some point. But, yeah. And then, j- just like with uh, you know baseball, you you have the pe- the people that are going to be up in arms, like, well, how do you measure this one regular season team to one from the eighties? Where you know they, who cares? Who cares? I want the good teams to be rewarded for doing what they're supposed to win in regulation. I don't want teams 
going to, you know, going to overtime, sharing points. And it's just as good as somebody who blows the brakes off somebody with like a, a seven to two win in 60 minutes. No, if you do that in 60, you get three points. But, you know, that, that like I said, credit to the NHL. They're going to have a matchup between four or five teams down to the final week of the season. They might even have like the final day dueling who's going to get through that type of thing. Um, so long story short, the wild are in for a bumpy ride here. <laughs> um, I know that, uh, I not, I'm not necessarily back in on them officially, but boy, are they putting together a couple wins here that they look impressive and maybe it looks more impressive because some of the teams that have granted the Kraken last night and Edmonton at times, they just look like they didn't really want to be out there on the ice against them. So yeah. that, that does help the, uh, the eye case, uh, the, you know, the eye test for them, but uh, the wild, I wish we would have seen this in the first month or two of the season. Our buddy Dino probably would still be behind the oh, bench and wouldn't have been fired. Wouldn't have been fired, but yeah, it's uh it's, it's frustrating that now we're deciding, Hey, let's, uh, let's try, but Hey, that's where John Hines comes in. If he doesn't, nobody tells them that, Hey, we guys, we have to be tired. We have to try in these games. So credit to John Hines for that elite coaching there. Yeah, uh, so since the All-Star break, okay, mm -hmm. the Wild 7-1-1. One, and one. So, I mean, it's been impressive. Hines came here. They, they had a great start. Uh, I, I believe that at one point they were actually percentage points-wise in the second playoff spot, in, in that second wild card spot. Then they lost, guys. But I'm tired of hearing, well, they didn't have this guy. And every team has injuries, okay? I, I'm so sick yep. of hearing about, well, they didn't have this guy and that guy. You know what? Too bad. Like, everybody has guys hurt. So, like, you're not the only poor little team that didn't have. The fact is you flopped completely. You look, and, look at Boston at the beginning of the season. Yeah, they, exactly. They I were just, playing with their AHL team for the first, you know, two like months, football. essentially. And they're, they got 81 points already. It's, and it's like football, dude. I mean, yes, everyone gets hurt. Like, okay, Kirk's hurt. Too bad. You've, you can either win or you can't. Yeah. Um, and, and plus this, I'll get to this point in a second, but anyway, so now post all-star break seven, one, and one, but here's what I want to talk about. Okay. A week from Friday, like this is, this is, we'll talk about this, uh, with us today. We'll certainly talk about this with Jesse and Declan on Wednesday, a week from Friday is the trade deadline. And you remember, you know, when Bill Guerin held that press conference, I think it was before the, the Islanders game at the X. Yeah. And he was basically saying, you know, no, we're not going to dump. We're going to say, you know, I'm, I still think that we have a great chance at the playoffs. And we, I was like, no, you don't. And you probably shouldn't at this point in time. Um, but here's the question. What are you going to do? Uh, and keep in mind, Calgary's a point behind you. Calgary has traded Lindholm already. They are supposedly aggressively shopping Hannafin and Tanev and Markstrom. Now, the difference with several with a few of those guys is they're in contract years. Like yeah. the Wild locked up their contract year guy. I mean, can you imagine if you had the chance to shop, <laughs> you know, Zuccarello right now? But the problem is you probably wouldn't. So I guess my question is this. What are you going to do? Because I will unequivocally tell you this. That first line, which, by the way, I will again say, a lot of you out there, you fans, called for that line how long ago? Yeah. You know, to take Kaprizov. Zuccarello and Kaprizov are unbelievable together on the power play. Dirty little secret. Because... The opposing team's down a man so they have more chance to get cute <laughs> like they're they're the cute twins and yeah. you can get cute five on four what what the problem is five on five you're not up a man and now you're trying to make you're trying to go gretzky curry uh when you're not those guys you know so anyway what are you gonna do and the dirty little secret is that first line in four games this week courtesy of our friend Michael Russo of The Athletic, his Twitter account, okay? You went three and one, right? You went three and one? Kaprizov, six goals, 12 points, 17 shots. Eric Zanek, wow. who, by the way, got hurt on Saturday, and we'll talk about that as well. Three goals, nine points, 14 shots. Matthew Boldy, four goals, seven points, 18 shots. Now, yes, some of this came on power play opportunities, but that's your depth right there. And, and I tweeted this out last night. And here's my question about the trade deadline. If you seriously think you're going to make the playoffs and can, and can compete, you're going to be in a position in the playoffs where time and space disappears. And yes, they call penalties, but I'll tell you what they're not going to do. They ain't going to put you up by two men consistently. So if you're on a five on four, I could come out there personally and mug a wild player. And in the playoffs, they ain't going to put you on a five on three. 
No. That they've been doing that for like the past two weeks. Credit to the Wild for drawing the penalties. I got no problem with that. But playoff time, that's done. The focus on your line is going to be so much greater on that line is going to be so much greater than than it is now because the playoffs in hockey, more so than any sport in my opinion, are a, just a different game. So if you're Bill Guerin, a week from Friday, what do you do? It's it's conundrum heading, is what it is, AJ. Yeah, we're heading into really murky waters here <sighs> because on one well, side of things, like, well do I think this team in this locker room has like deserved? Do they have they shown? Do they deserve to be buyers? No. No, they don't. You're you're not in a position where I feel comfortable, and I I love I hate, I love going and like spending pull tabs just just as much as the next guy. But you wanna, you understand there it's it's a losing battle. You know you're gonna it, that you're striking a lot of luck if you come back and you get a ripper and it says hey you just won big. The wild that's what you're doing. This if you try to be a buyer right now, you're banking on whoever's coming in is one going to immediately mesh because that's, that's the biggest thing with these yep. trades like great immediately mesh. You can't go in. You can't, you, you, you can't expect them to have a week or two or maybe even three to like fit, figure out the nuances of how the, how they're playing with these guys, where they fit in, like what, what's the line you should have. It should be, you're going here. Everything works immediately. You're the final piece of the puzzle and you're adding depth. And we show that we, we we've seen they need depth. You, you score 10 goals against uh, Vancouver the other day, and it was essentially only the top line. So we, you know, we ha- we have an issue there. Um, if you do have any sort of wavering, you're 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 just trading assets, and it's it's you're in a losing fight. It's that that's the biggest thing here, and I I just don't think you just stand they- pat then. <sighs> no, I'm. It's easy for me to say because I'm not the guy who's got the right. job on the line of right. having to make these big decisions. So my easy decision for me is almost do like a mini Calgary, which is you, you trade expendables because first off Merrick Kusnadinov is now officially done with his season over in Russia. If the plan from all things reported is to bring him over, sign him, burn that first year of his ELC. Yep. Then you got to move it forward. There's an other, you, you can't take him when you're dead. You know, The the sad thing is you're not wrong. But the guy that I would move, you just signed to a new contract with a no trade. I'd love to move Hartman. It's and by the way, I think Hartman on a real playoff team again, like a real yeah that needs a third line, fourth line grinder. I think mm-hmm. he'd be great there. The issue here is they're always asking him to do too much. He's on the power. Why is he on the power play? What's going on? You know. Yeah. But yeah, you're you're right. But like so there. So I actually think that this has become, and I'm sure that that the the wild fandom we'll push back as far as those that defend the team. I, I got a guy right now who defends, who's like a very excited. I'm like, dude, you got to calm down. But um, here's the issue too. Like, okay, you want to talk about tentacles, right? So you're seven, one on one since the break, you're right in the thick of the race. Now the playoff race. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. First of all, you can't trade the guys that you're talking about because they are, they all basically have some type of protection now. Unless you go to them and try and trade them. But you're playing so well, I don't think that you're going to. Kuznetinov, you're exactly right about. He intrigues me as mm-hmm. far as being as far as stepping in and get getting a chance. And it's not like your center play top to bottom is so good that you're like, oh my God, I can't make a change. But here's the other problem. You've got three big guys out right now. Bogosian, who by by the way, I think once he's set to play, just slots right back in. I don't think that's a problem. Yeah, I think so. Maroon Maroon and Felino are an issue now. Cause I, did you see what I do? You see what I see? The skating ability of this team, like in Edmonton, they're going. Like last night, they're going. Like and and, I mean, they're aggressive on pucks. They are literally getting to pucks that Maroon can't get to now. So, do you try and trade Maroon? Which I think I would do, but he's hurt, so he might not be back. So you might not get a thing for him. But I got. To call a spade a spade here, Age. Do it. I think you have a real problem with health, which probably you won't have. You'll have guys get hurt. Mm-hmm. But where where does where does Marcus slot back in? It's tough. And do I I 
do I think that the reason why they've been so successful here in part is to because the absence of Marcus Foligno? No, I don't think so. I think, I mean, it's just the top line has just been right. unbelievable. That's that's what it comes down to, in my mind at least, right. in my view of this team is like, you're not getting the scoring from the second. We, well, the second at times you are, and I'm still impressed with like Marco Rossi. Oh yeah, uh, I got no problem with Rossi. Yes, I agree with that. But it's like the third and the fourth line and uh, frankly, some of the second line wingers, it depends on the night, but it's just that top line has just been so good as of late that it's just, they're with the addition of like the occasional really good goaltending performance. They're just, not, I'm not going to say stealing games, but they're willing themselves to victory. So I'm concerned that it, it's like the twins batting, batting order. It's like the twins batting order. Yeah. When Byron Buxton last year gets put in, in, you know, he's batting fourth, whatever. Right. They might have guys, you're playing small ball. We're spraying it all around the field. We're just going station to station. Maybe, uh, you know, Kepler comes up and he rips one to the gap and blah, blah, blah. Now Correa's there. He's going to poke one over the wall. And then we come around to Buxton and, he, you know, in that slump. And he's just, you know, he's, you could tell that something's wrong. And then everything just comes to that grinding halt. Right. And it's just, uh, it's just right. there's no flow. I don't want Marcus Foligno. Yeah. to have to be slotted back in and forced and then have that grinding halt happen. I don't think he's the main reason that they've now been so successful in his absence. Like I, I agree with that, but there, but there is a portion where things are working right, right. now without wow. him. So the, there's, there's a point to talk about there. And I think, I think what people are probably screaming right now is what do you mean? Stick him on the left wing of the second line, potentially in place of Joe Hansen. Okay, I don't mind that, but here's your problem. That second line can skate, and that's all Johansson can do. And obviously, Hines, Hines likes that. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, like, any reason to get Johansson out. And by the way, you'll be shocked. Breaking news, he played really well against a former team last night and scored a goal. <laughs> I, 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 so he has nine goals on the season. Four of them have come against teams he played for. He scored two in a game against the Capitals. He scored last night against the Kraken, and he scored earlier this season against Boston. So four of his nine goals have come against f former JoJo teams. But anyway, I don't think Hines is going to take him off that wing because I think he likes the speed of that, that line. And clearly, Hines likes to watch him skate. Like, he's a hell of a skater. He just yeah. doesn't do much besides that. Okay, so now let's go. D does he replace? Does Felino come back and somehow replace Goudreau? Although I don't know what the what that line would be, I'm fine with that too. But you clearly keep playing him like the, so. This is where I'm I'm curious and flat out. I don't think Pat Maroon has a place here. I I don't. I he's slower than Marcus. Mm -hmm. I mean I am I'm not looking for an excuse to keep Felino out. My question is with how well things are going, I think it becomes a bit more difficult in John Hines's mind. Um, but I think flat out. Pat Maroon, if he comes back and they can't get a thing for, for him, I sit him in the press box until there's an, an injury or something like that. I don't think that there's a place for him. Yeah. Um, Maroon, I will say, great guy, like, and probably a fantastic locker room guy. Like, he's done it. He, he's, he won three in a row. But if you can get something, I mean, there's got to be a team that needs, like, that presence. But when's he back from the injury? See, that's the problem. Yeah, he, he had a back procedure done, which which at his age worries me. Now I've seen him in the locker room post game, and he looks fine. Like he's he's fine. He's not like it, it's not like he's in a he's body not limping cast or something. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. he's not like limping, so he looks fine. But anyway, I think that's a tough one. And and the one thing that I don't want them to do is I don't want them to have a guy come back and take Lucini out. And slot Goudreau, Goudreau down. And then, like, I want them to lift. If you're going to put Felino back in, or hell, Maroon back in, mm -hmm. I want you to sit a veteran in the press box. Like, yeah, it but... needs to be, it should be Joe Hansen. It won't be. It should be Goudreau. I think that that for, I think the guys that constitute, you know, that last line, the fourth line, act, you know, do they deserve to come out? In my opinion, no. No, I, I think they're heart and soul guys. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, looking at, I mean, look, looking at the combos, you're not touching that top line nope. at all. I mean, nothing's changing there. Caprizov, Eck, Boldy, for sure. Unless Eck is actually hurt from. Yeah. And I mean, 
it should be all good is John Hines. Said, John Hines, John, we'll talk John Hines was like, what are you talking about? He got hurt. I mean, the guy slammed into the boards mm-hmm. and then went off the ice and we didn't see him again. So I am concerned there. But let's say for the sake of this discussion right right now that, that he is fine and good to go Tuesday against Carolina at the X. Yeah. Um, second line, Johansson, Hartman, Zuccarello. I'm still adamant. Get Rossi on that second line. I There's no... They like the, this new... The Lucini Rossi Letary line is interesting. I just, I just feel like Rossi is going to benefit more from playing with a guy like Zuccarello. Um, I agree, but I like I like Letary's speed. Yeah, he they, like, and I think Lucini that, has done nothing to be scratched. Yeah, and the, and that's the thing. That third line, I wouldn't say they are the flashiest line that you're ever going to see in your life, but boy, do they work their ass off. They do the right things. Play pace. Yes. And that's where, and that's where I don't want to like, I can, I you almost like slow you, it down. That's, you, that, that's what I'm saying. You can't throw a stone at Letary or Lucini because frankly, they kind of, they got their shot. They were told, Hey, this is your role. This is what you're going to do. If you excel fantastic, but this is the bar and they have played above that bar. Yep. I feel like their entire tenure here with yep. the big club. So it, it, it's hard to say, Hey, we got to sit you for a guy that's uh slower, just and, and older than than you. So uh fourth line, yep. Duhame, Dewar, Goudreau. I'm That's... I I know he's got the fun nickname. I know he's good in the shootout. I'm kind of done with Freddie Freddie phone booth. Um oh yeah. Yeah, he's at no, I I would sit it's... he would probably he would be my choice to sit. That and but I'm not sure I'm doing much with these lines. No, when, like there's not a when lot when Marcus of comes back. I'm not sure I'm going to I'm not sure I'm going to work to, to make him a top six or or in their world. I'm not really sure. The third and fourth line to, to me is, I'm not even really sure who's the third and fourth line. Like it's an, in, it almost feels in some ways, aside from Rossi, like an in, interchangeable bottom six. But that's my point about this is not as easy as it sounds. Because at, at first it's like, well, just bench this guy or take this guy out or take I like Letary's speed. I like what Lucini has done for sure. I'm with you on Marco. I probably would stick him back up and bring Hart- Hartman down, but they've clearly decided that they like uh, the constitution of that, what they call their second line now. So, yeah. Here, here's what I'll do. Here, it, it, Just to be in, this might be contrarian just to like, you know, sp- offer a different opinion. Here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do here. I still don't think Marcus Johansson, when playing against a team that he never played for before, deserves yep. to be in the top six. I so, agree completely. So I'm going to say you demote him, you swap that Hartman, Rossi, and you probably bring up Lucini. So now that second line is Lucini, Rossi, and Zuccarello. Okay. And Matt's, Matt's is not as fast as those guys, but I think it's still going to be fine. You put Felino on that left wing with Hartman and now Letary, and then it's a matter, a matter of you put Johansson down below and do you take Goudreau out? I think if, I think if Johansson is not top – six i would i personally would scratch him you just scratch him okay yeah fine then that's but, that's what he's is. got the speed they that's the thing is just his skating alone like god forbid he he actually plays hard consistently because mm-hmm. his head might pop off or something but but yeah he is so he would be a guy that i would have no problem scratching but they won't so and they've just left themselves with some very yeah. interesting t- decisions and and look that's also assuming that they don't go into another tailspin. I mean, Philip Gustafson on Monday was unplayably bad. They finally took him out after two periods. Against the Oilers on Friday, he was probably a large part of the reason that they won that game because when Edmonton was trying and focused, which was not the entire game, first period, they basically didn't show up. Um, he, he was outstanding. But, I mean, that's Gus. He's up and down. It's part of the reason why I would love to maximize his value if you possibly could uh flurry now is clearly not being traded which i don't don't hate just because i love yeah. uh, the opportunity to watch him and cover him is so great but that's what sort of makes you know again in typical wild fashion by stopping and starting and stopping and starting they have now caused more consternation and like questions um where you would have just hoped that they would have fallen apart and you could say okay you know what? We'll start. We'll we'll reset this thing a little bit. Ain't no way that they're gonna do that now. And I also don't trust them once the deadline is done to go back down a bit again. Now they have a bunch of they've got some sharks and ducks games 
but you know they're capable of losing to anyone when they don't play well we've seen it before and that's that's the thing after like the all-star break i the big narrative i saw was well if you look they had one of the toughest first half schedules of every every yeah. team and in the league and, and boy injuries yeah yeah in injuries i don't care about the injuries but the 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 strength of schedule boy they got the hardest part of, they're coasting to the finish line now sure they have a couple tough tests vegas and vancouver here and there but boy they're cool. they can it. lose to anybody well, just as they've shown i guess they can beat anybody they can put up 10 on at the time the best team in the league they can certainly lose to anybody too because outside yeah. of that top line when a good coach wants to take it seriously and match up and shut them down it's nobody over. else is scoring so correct and that's and that's what you're going to get when you get to the playoffs judd and that's what we've seen the correct. past handful of years under dean Evison, where they just flat out against a very good team because strength the schedule is is out the window every team in the playoffs is going to be good it comes down to coach comes down to coaching and a good coach is going to say hey we're going to take that first line away from you we're going to smother them we're going to suffocate them marco rossi you're going to have to lead the way jake lucini become a star you know right. like that that's what well, that's now what you've got have to marco with the wrong guys that's the yeah. other problem too once you start that but yes the well what's funny is the erickson eck line has has in previous years of course come playoffs and, and he didn't play in the playoffs last year but they've always been the shutdown line of the opponent's top line mm -hmm. so what's the key now so are you trying <laughs> to go head to head there and then you know what's going to happen heinz is going to panic and he's going to put kaprizov and zuccarello back together and i guarantee you like the first game it'll be great and we'll all be like oh unbelievable what they did <laughs> and, and and by game three it'll be you know pass to you no pass to me no pass to you no pass to me <laughs> oh no it just got picked off and there's a breakaway for opponent x <laughs> you know that you you know that's what's gonna happen yeah. and so yeah that's the type of thing where i'm with you the playoffs are different and yes they call penalties but they don't call them like they do they're not going to give you two man advantages which which you almost hear soon starts uh, to go away because it's so not the, the real world. It doesn't help you to be uh, – teams don't even practice five on three. No. Like like the, the Wild was asked when I think they scored three five on three goals against the Canucks on Monday. You work on that a lot? They're like, no, we don't work on it hardly ever. Like, why would you work on it? It's it's pond hockey. It's fun to watch, but it's not yeah. real. It's not that's, the real world. Playoff-wise, you ain't going to see that. Yeah, that's like me working on dunking on, like, the hoop over my door in my room. Like, it's cool. Like, sure, I, I would love to throw a tomahawk dunk down, but I'm never going to do that in the real world. I have a 10-inch... Like I, I like that's as all that's as all as I can reach. Higher than me. Oh my Probably god! Higher than me. I can. I barely get off the ground. Anyways. Anyway. All right. Well, that's it. Look, the Wild's playing well. It's great, but I actually think playing well now creates more questions, and I really would love to see them keep their eye on the prize, which, in my opinion, at least, is the future. A couple of years from now, I think I, I'll stick with this. I think this team is going to be a really good, good team, and and the more that you can do to to set up that success, the better. Um, because I certainly do not see this team advancing past the first round. Could they make the playoffs? Absolutely. Clearly they can. Do I think it's going to be some great boon? No. And, uh, can we also stop with uh, well, it's good experience. Wilds had plenty of good first round. No, but like, if you haven't been to the playoffs, like, like when the wolves hadn't been forever, oh. it's like, that is good experience. You don't mm -hmm. get to the playoffs. Now you do. You can sort of see what the tempo and paces. This team doesn't need to go. This, this locker room is full of guys who have been to the playoffs. They don't need that like experience of they've already had the experience. And a lot of them have absolutely gagged when the playoffs start. So like, let's stop. Like this is a room there. There will be in a couple of years, it'll be a younger room. And yeah. then those guys playoff experience is a good thing. This team, they have seen the playoffs plenty and they can't get past the first round. Yeah. And I, I'll even flip it there. They've made the playoffs 10 out of the last 11 seasons, like the most of any team in that span, maybe it'd be a good experience to just suck, you know? Just, no, just too be, late for that. Like that, and that's the thing. Like, I, I love getting to the playoffs. It's fun, you know, because oh, they yeah, always the have a fight and chance and all that stuff. But the, I, there's no, there's no feeling about this team that I feel confident that once they get in, if they do, they're gonna do something other than have a first round exit, which we've seen year after year after year after year. Like, I'm just, I'm sick of the first rounds. You gotta, you gotta do something. So, uh, getting there, like you said, I don't care about that experience. That's just a, a, an average day at the office for this team. It seems like. Amen, brother. All right. He's AJ. I'm Judd back again on uh, Wednesday with Declan and Jesse to talk more about the precarious position of
the Wild. They play Carolina on Tuesday at the X, so who knows where they'll be points-wise by then. Talk to you.